like RSF instead of like rich, resting bitch face. I have like resting stupid face. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? I'm Joe from Workbench, and today we're going to look at a cool way to quickly loop complex animations. So let's check it out. Okay, so I've purposely built this animation to loop from the beginning. However, you can use this on an existing animation if you tweak some stuff. The basic idea is to time everything out to a specific set of frames. In this case, we want everything to loop at 20 frames. But if you play it like this, it's kind of boring because everything kind of moves the same. And I want things to be offset. You could go through and calculate how long each piece should be to offset it and loop keys around, but there's a way better way. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move this down the timeline. Start it at 20, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna take all of these keys that I have, and I'm gonna copy them, and paste them right there. And then I'm gonna go up to the other stuff I have, these little bubbles and stuff. You can see they don't actually go the full 20 because I don't want them to be there the entire time. So we're gonna copy these, paste them at 20 as well. So if I were to play this, it would just keep looping over and over and over again. So I'm gonna hit B here to make this 20 frames again. Actually, it's 19 technically, this should stop at 39. That way our loop actually continues on the next frame instead of pausing for one frame. So what's nice now is that by doing it this way, we've built in another loop. So now you can actually take these groups of keyframes and offset them through this work area. You just have to make sure that your frames straddle the actual work area. I missed duplicating that layer, so we're gonna fix that real quick. Copy these, paste them over. All right, so I'm gonna move these all around, shift them. That one'll be a true loop. So there you go. So if we play this now, you'll see that it actually keeps boiling. I got a little issue right here only because I don't have them like disappear completely. So to fix that, what I'm gonna do actually is toggle the uh, position, the last position frame. Oops, click just that one. Toggle the hold keyframe on that. Doesn't really matter over here, but for the sake of consistency, we'll do that. And then we'll have to do the same thing to its size parameter. So that one, that one. So that one should at least not come back. All right, you can see the other one does, so we're gonna fix that as well. Click those two, toggle that. Click these two, toggle that. And you can see they can just pop. Uh, this one bubble, I didn't move it down enough, apparently. A smaller bubble. I like it to be kind of completely submerged. So what you gotta do if you're gonna do something like that is copy the keyframe and make sure it copies to its loop. It doesn't exactly have to because this is within the loop, so it'll kind of make up for it. But that gets into some super complex loops. So you gotta be careful if you wanna do that. So there you go. And you can see that's a lot more interesting. So we still have these things going and that's kind of boring. So we're gonna go over here and find those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this, hit UU, so we can actually see how these go. And there's one set and I can tell because it's colored like that. So what I'm gonna do is take this, offset it slightly. Move both of these over there. So now if we play it, you can see that it actually has a little bit better motion because it's not like just inverting each other. It actually kind of feels like that liquid moves around a little bit better. So we're gonna do the same thing to the next one. I'm just gonna look for the next set with color. Keep going down. And obviously if you set these up in different layers and stuff, it's a lot easier. Delay that a little bit. And then I'm gonna move these down. Keep going, keep going. All right, we got the orange one. And the green one. You know what, let's try it this way this time. See what it looks like. Should be almost the same, but it might look like it's going backwards of the other ones. No, not really, but I don't mind it. All right, see so if we can find that last blue one. Move it down like that. And there we go, now they're all moving differently. All right, I'm gonna go up here real quick at the top. And since After Effects actually does this live thing, which normally I'm not a huge fan of, can actually go through and mess around with these live. Uh, I kind of feel like the bubbles should be a little bit later. So let's make this happen like right here. So that's only gonna happen once per loop. It doesn't stretch across each thing. It's actually not bad. And then I'm gonna move these down a little bit. That might break it. It's hard to say, actually. All right, so now I can use something like GIF Gun to make a GIF of it. And that's pretty much it. So you can have some complex looping without much effort as long as you make sure that you fit everything within a certain block of frames. So let's just recap real quick. All you gotta do is set up a certain number of frames, make sure you duplicate your existing animations at that frame amount, and then just slide them until you have something that looks the way you want it to. So that was pretty easy, right? Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you feel like helping to support Workbench, check out patreon.com slash workbench. And make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great content. All right, I am Joe from Workbench, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.